Joining me now to discuss is Elliot Mendes. He's a Middle East expert with the Israel Project and Eric Mendel, director of the Middle East Political Information Network. All right, a lot to discuss here, Eric. Let's start with you. Firstly, we have the United Nations Atomic Watchdog now confirming that Iran is uh, preparing these advanced centrifuges. We also know that Iran has publicly said that it is now openly violating the deal. And we assume that it's already been violating the deal. We have evidence that shows that it has. So with these declarations and these developments, how far away is Iran from attaining a nuclear weapon? Well, we had given the Iranians the ability to, to develop R&D on advanced centrifuges. Now they're actually hooking them up. So we had uh, said that they can run IR1s, but things called IR2s, 4s, 5s, 6s, and 8s, which can spin much faster um, much to make fissile material, um, they can really get down to just a few weeks or even a few months to have enough material for a nuclear bomb. That's not enough necessarily because they still have to be able to deliver it, but as maybe the most important part here, um, they can have uh, nuclear, enough nuclear material for a nuclear bomb in a relatively short time, and we gave them that permission in the JCPOA. Yeah, so I, I guess, uh, Elliot, that this uh, says a lot about the efficacy of the deal in the first place, that Iran is able to get a weapon so quickly, that uh, part of the deal has enabled it to get a weapon, and that Iran hasn't been violating the deal anyway, as Israeli intelligence is showing. So doesn't this just go to confirm how bad this deal is in the first place? Absolutely. Now, from the outset of the JCPOA of the uh, Iran deal, we've known that it provided Iran with a glide path towards developing advanced centrifuges and towards being able to shorten dramatically the window for breakout time uh, to get enough fissile material to create a nuclear weapon. Uh, it was a flawed deal to begin with. It's being borne out uh, that it was a flawed deal with every revelation we get each day. All right, so Eric, if Iran is on this path, at what point does Israel or even the United States or even together feel a need to take some kind of preventative action, be it military action, be it some kind of cyber attack. I mean, surely Israel cannot let Iran to continue with this march because it's calling on the international world to act. So far, the Europeans are not listening. At what point is Israel forced to maybe take some kind of action? Well, Israel can't rely on anybody but itself uh, to protect itself, even with all the great support from America. Um, foreign policy had a piece today that America puts pressure on, but Israel's carrying out all the work. So Israel had a piece that came out about six weeks ago that said, when will the, it be too late that it, right. it pass one day? And I spoke to the former head of military intelligence who says, we will know that. But what they say, we will know that, what does that mean? Does that mean necessarily hitting nuclear facilities? Does it mean hitting um, their major container port in Badr Abbas? Does it mean hitting economically Karg Island where 90% of their fossil fuels go through? Will it be another Stutnex that's there? The question here is we're de dealing with four major crises directly with Iran, that, that we have the nuclear, we have what's going right. on in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq. This has been out of control. Eric, you seem pretty convinced that Israeli intelligence will indeed know when it's too late or just before the point that it's too late. Is, is, is that enough security that it will be Israeli intelligence that will have to determine this? Well, the, it, this is an existential issue, not necessarily for, for America. This is an existential issue for Israel. This is its most important issue. Its number one issue is nuclear. Its number two issue is not to have Iranian entrenchment in Syria and any more in Lebanon and the transfer of missiles um, that go through. And that's why you just had the hit on the Syrian-Iraq border. So will they know enough? Israel has been very good up until this point, but they better be right. Yeah, they better be right. As you say, a lot at stake, and it could uh, escalate very, very quickly. All right, stick around, Eric and Elliot. We want to continue this conversation after the break. Back with me is Elliot Mendez. He's a Middle East expert with the Israel Project, and Eric Mandel, director of the Middle East Political Information Network. Eric, we have been seeing drones increasingly being used both by the Israeli Defense Forces from a surveillance perspective, as well as uh, from its enemies. With all of the threats that Israel faces from several fronts, how does Israel prioritize the threat it needs to tackle first? Well, Israel's number one priority is Iranian nuclear, so that's clear. Second priority, as I said, is transferring weapons. You think that's a bigger priority than a Hezbollah Lebanon uh, attack um, in terms of, of an imminent threat? As an imminent threat, it's all part of the same octopus. Yeah. 
The idea here is there are no Iranian proxies. By a, a supreme leader is in charge of Hezbollah, supreme leader is in charge of the popular mobilization units, whether they are in Iraq, part of the, uh, they're part of the Iraqi army, but they're Iranian controlled, whether they're in Syria, um, putting up a forward base, whether there's Hezbollah, whether it's the Houthis, mm -hmm. we are dealing with Iran being controlled. So I think the idea of separating it is the wrong thing to do. Drones are just a part of right. what's going on. And, you know, uh, Elliot, that's a point that Prime Minister Netanyahu is making over and over again, that Iran is the biggest threat to the region and to the world at large. He's pointing out that Iran has a pattern of systematically lying to the world. He's trying to get the Europeans to finally pay attention that Iran is, is sponsoring terrorist proxy attacks on Israeli civilians, a, a war crime. They just haven't been successful, not for lack of trying from Iran's end. Do you get a sense that he's also trying to convey this to President Trump, that there's some kind of nervousness that there'll be a conversation between the president and the president of Iran, Rouhani, and that President Trump may somehow soften his position. I think that the U.S.-Israel relationship is very strong, and the relationship between the prime minister and the president is very strong. But I think the prime minister also understands uh, the American president uh, and the temptation to enter into uh, negotiations uh, without the right preconditions. So the prime minister, we've seen the reports uh, that the prime minister tried getting the president on the phone when he was at the G8 to urge him not to meet with uh, Iran's foreign minister. Uh, and this is a continuation of that. But he's going to continue to beat the drum, and he's going to continue to raise the flag. I think the good news is that in this administration, he's got a friend and an ally, uh, but he views this as his sacred responsibility to raise the, the prospect of the existential threat that a nuclear Iran would represent to Israel. All right. We're out of time. Thank you so much, Elliot Mendez, Eric Mandel. Appreciate it.